So today we're looking at the five major scale patterns over the entire fretboard of the guitar. I'm going to demonstrate the patterns in two different keys in C major and G major, but these are closed patterns, so that means they don't use open strings. That also means that you can um, move them to any key, and I'll, I'll talk about how that works in just a moment. So watch the video lesson for free and gain all the scale patterns and, and tips for free. But if you want, you can pick up my major scale book for beginner to intermediate students. And um, that kind of gives you some diagrams of these things and the notation and as well as some tabs as well. So you have everything you need to kind of get a, a little bit of a foundation in major scales before moving on to something like the Aaron Shear scale supplement, which is very extensive. Um, but this is a great book to kind of just get you into it. But like I said, watch the video for free and uh, you can learn a lot from it, especially if you have other books. So before I go over the five patterns, um, let me just explain what closed movable patterns mean. So closed just means that there's no open strings involved. Um, and when there's no open strings involved, then you, then you have like a set pattern on the guitar, right? Movable pattern means that if you change the starting note, so I started on C, so it's a C major scale. If I move it up two frets, C, C sharp, D, and do the same finger pattern, then I have a D major scale. And if I go up again, it's D sharp major, E major, F major, F sharp major. So a movable scales are very useful because you learn one finger pattern and then you know 12 scales. So what we are going to do is we're going to learn all of the major scale patterns over the entire guitar. And these can be used for improvisation, if you wish. They can be used for when you're reading music. When you're reading music and, you're, and you know you're in a key like C major, and you say like, oh, those are, that's, those are the available notes. That's the scale. There's a connection between reading music and scale patterns. Um, and it also allows you to kind of like understand key signatures on the guitar. So in the key of C major, for example, it's like playing all the white keys of the piano. Um, you, you can like see visually what your key signature is. So let's learn the five patterns. So the first, we're going to do this in C major first, and then do it in G major just to compare. So the first pattern we'll learn is starting on the fifth string with the second finger. So in the key of C, that's the third fret. Notice that squeeze shift. You squeeze the first finger in. That way you can extend it later. So you can see I'm playing all the notes within the whole area of the guitar. So that means all the notes of C major. I start on the root, go up to the next octave, then the highest note in the position, back to the root, to the lowest note in the position, and then I return. Okay, next pattern. This is starting on the sixth string with the fourth finger. So that's fifth position and fourth finger on the eighth fret on C. It's the same sound. If you're having trouble following the patterns, use your ear. Just get the first note and then use your ear. You know what a major scale sounds like, so you just have to um, listen for it, right? So starting with the fourth finger on C. from this root, squeeze shift, so there's the next root, to that root. Okay, um, well, one more time. Next pattern, this is the second thing, starting on the sixth string with the second finger. This is a very common pattern. I 
Actually, I forgot to go to the highest note. I just went to the root, so let's do that again. So we're not just doing the scale from one octave to the next, we're using all of the notes within the position. So from C to C to C to the highest note, back to C to that C to that C to the lowest note and return. Because you, when you're reading music, like if you only practice your scales just from root to root, there's other notes that exist in C major. You, you can't ignore it when you're reading music. Um, there's other notes involved, right? Or when you're putting scat, uh, scale patterns together and you're combining things, um, there's other notes that you might not know from that key. So you want to know all of the notes from C major, just all of them. Just be, have a real strong foundation in all of the notes within a key. Okay. Next pattern. This is um, starting on the fourth string with your second finger. So that's the 10th fret in this case, this C here. So lots of squeeze shifts there, right? root to that root to the C and then to the highest note back to the C C to the lowest note and back to the C so you really want to know where the roots are so in the diagrams in the book you can see the the little um, white circles are the roots and the black circles are the other notes in the key so the last pattern, now this is getting pretty awkward, but remember that these are, because it's in upper positions here, but remember these are movable scales. So in other keys, this pattern that I'm about to do will be much easier. Like in, um, in, this, in the key of E, it'll be right here. So it's awkward in the key of C, but not in other keys. So you just memorize the pattern and then you'll apply it to other keys when convenient. It's a little bit awkward in that key, but when I do it in the key of G major, it'll happen down here, so you'll get a chance to see that pattern again. So there's only five patterns, so if you're totally bewildered and you're like, this is way too much information, just remember there's only five patterns. So if you keep practicing it, and, you, and then you practice it in different keys, like I presented in my book, you will start to see the patterns. And you'll also start to see the patterns when you do um, other scale fingerings, like if you know your C, um, major scale is this from a larger pattern that you practiced and then you're practicing a scale that moves into it you'll be like oh yeah that's that pattern that I've seen before and that's what you want is pattern recognition and to be able to visualize and see the guitar in terms of key signatures so let's do this in a different key now so remember these are the, exactly the same patterns in a different key. So the first one we'll do, and this is the key of G major, the first one we'll do is starting on the sixth string with your second finger. So remember in the key of C we did that up here starting on C, same fingering, right? of G so we have to start on G next pattern starting on the fourth string with the second finger so that's G that's in fourth position 
Fifth fret, starting note. Pattern has lots of squeeze shifts, but it's a very useful, useful one. Starting on the fifth string with the fourth finger. So remember in the key of C we did this one and it was way up here. It was kind of awkward. But now it's not because we're in a different key. So that's starting on the fifth string with your fourth finger. So on G. And then starting on the fifth string with the second finger. So before that was down here in the key of C, because we started on C, but now we're in the key of G, so we're starting here. And then the final pattern, starting on the sixth string with your fourth finger. So again, this is awkward in the key of G. In the key of C, it was here. Um, in the key of G, it's way up here, so it's a little awkward. But again, it's just you're just playing patterns, so in, in a different key, it'll be easier. And sometimes you have to read up here anyway, so it's good to get used to it. So then in, on the last page of this section of the book, you have the pattern over the entire fingerboard. So you can see the entire fingerboard um, and see the entire pattern over the entire fingerboard. So all the five patterns and how they interlock with each other. So that's a very important diagram, especially if you improvise and stuff like that. But even in classical music, like we learn these patterns in box forms, but then in our repertoire, it doesn't work like that usually. Usually we're like moving between the different patterns, which makes it much more difficult. But um, the more that you're familiar with the five patterns, the more switching between them will be easy. So like the rest of the book, you've had lots of scales that go shift. So that combines a C major scale here. C major scale here and then you combine them by shifting into the next one that way you can actually arrive at a C at the top like we do in traditional scales so this is a ton of information and don't be fooled this takes a long time to learn so don't think you're just gonna breeze through it you have to work it and rework it and explore. You have to have fun with it. You have to be strict with it. You have to like study it in every way that you can to get a real handle on it. But once you can, because there's only five patterns, once you really know them, you're going to see them everywhere. You'll see those patterns everywhere. Whenever you're in a major key, whenever you're playing any kind of major scale, you're going to see those patterns. So I highly recommend you study this very carefully.